How's your holiday season going? I know mine's pretty funky. It's been it's been a whirlwind and I wanted to just come on and talk about that because it's not always good or fun or beautiful or what you you think it should be. And um, it can be actually a really hard time. And for many out there, I know lonely time and uh, expectations are falling short for ourselves and for others around us. So uh, funky holiday season. That's what I'm going to talk about today because I am definitely there. It's the week between, you know, the holidays and New Year's where a lot of people take time off of work or, you know, we want to just spend time with family. And then sometimes family time gets to be more than you think it's going to be. Or, you know, it's just people don't like to be off schedule is what I'm finding. It's interesting. Uh, but thinking back to the holiday, you know, maybe you have uh, people in your life that make it difficult around the holidays, or maybe you've lost people and, and they're no longer here with you, which makes it really, really hard. I know I'm in a spot where it's interesting because I have uh, my mom, who I was once very, very close to, best of friends, um, my everything now won't even talk to me. So it's almost like the people that have lost parents are probably screaming at me right now saying, you're so lucky that she's still here and you better go figure it out with her and, and make it right. And at the same time, maybe there's the people out there that understand that sometimes you can't help people who don't want to be helped. And it's a very hard place to be, especially when I'm out here doing transformational coaching and I have all these clients and people that are just so grateful and thankful for the information I spread and I share and for coaching and transforming and changing their lives and their perspective and just how they view things and, and just making an impact on so many people. And yet when you can't do that to your own mom, it's interesting. It's a very interesting place to be because you want to obviously more than anything. And yet, you know, then you have a little bit of the imposter syndrome. Well, how good of a coach could I actually be if I can't even help my own mom? And there's a little bit of stuff to work through along with the guilt of, you know, a lot of people not having their parents here anymore. And I do. And yet it's almost as if she's not because last time I was in the room with her, she barely even acknowledged me or look at me. So then what, where do we go from there? And so I wanted to just talk about that today because it's been a hard week with that. And just with a lot of other things, it's been a funky holiday I'm in Minnesota, and if you know anything about the Midwest, we sure like to talk about our weather all the time, because the joke is if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. And with with that said, it's been a record-breaking warm temperatures. We've had rain, and it's been drizzling, and it's been cloudy and murky and just gross for this whole last week, it feels like. I think I've seen the sun once. So it's a little bit depressing. There's no snow. It's just gross out. And so maybe that has something to do with it. That's the reason I'm mentioning it. And also, obviously, we talk about our weather all the time. <laughs> uh, so with that said, you know, and with things going on where, you know, maybe the holiday rituals didn't go as as you thought they would go. I know my 11-year-old, my uh, we had the whole talk and the come to, you know, um, Jesus conversation about the powers that be in the magic in case there's anyone listening, um, you know, and, and what it actually is. And I did not think she was going to react the way she did. And so that was really hard. You know, that was my mom fail of the holiday season for sure. Uh, so that was, was a hard one for me. And then it just kept going, you know, then a celebration didn't go as I thought it was going to go. And it, 
just you name it, it happens. So then what? Where do you go from there when you just don't, you're not feeling it and it's not going, it's funky. It's not the best time of the year, as they say, and they sing in the songs. Well, what I did and what I wanted to come on and talk about, because I think it's important, whether it's this time of year or any time of the year, is really going back to the basics with me, and that's gratitude. If you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know that everything for me starts with gratitude. Uh, And leaning in a little bit more was also the contrast. So going back to what it is, you know, the pendulum, having it swing one way and then back the other. So knowing the contrast of what isn't feeling good, what I'm not appreciating, what's draining my energy and pulling it back the other way and choosing to be grateful, choosing to take care of what I can take care of and control what I can control and realizing and really lining up the ducks of what I can control and what I can't control and acceptance of that. You know, I can only help the people that want help. I can't coach people that, you know, people don't come to me clearly if they're not looking for a transformation or wanting to uh, level up up their game, whether it be with their career as a realtor or as a mom, as, you know, um, relationship. I mean, I can go on and on about all the different places I, I coach. I know when people come for, to me for one thing, it's usually another area that we actually end up focusing on, which is fine. Uh, it's, it's all related and it's just going, it's going for, and looking at how you yourself can level up. And while we're going into the new year, I know so many people make New Year's resolutions and break them. It's a big joke. It's an ongoing joke in our culture, I guess. And so I want to talk to you. And if you are one of the ones that set your New Year's resolution and you knock it out of the park year after year after year, I congratulate you. Uh, many people don't. And so I would also love to talk to you and see how you recommit every day because that's what I coach on. And if you have something maybe that you do that I could know, I would love to hear that. So reach out to me if you have cup every single New Year's resolution you've ever made and can even remember once we get to like March or April because many people can't. So for the rest of you that don't make New Year's resolutions or make them and break them or can't keep them, I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you about just choosing one discipline, meaning deciding that you're going to do one thing differently every day, whether it's you're going to read for 10 minutes or listen to Audible for 10 minutes, or you're going to exercise or join a gym or an app on your phone or walk on the treadmill or eat something different. You know, what are you going to feed your body differently? How are you going to move your body differently? What are you going to educate yourself with? You know, make yourself better. Think about that and just choose one thing. And it doesn't have to be this earth shattering, huge thing that is going to take you from here to, you know, one to 100. I'm talking about just picking a thing that you can choose to, and you will choose to show up every day and recommit to. And the thing is, is as you do that, and as you, you 1% better every day, at the end of the year, all these small wins and all this compound effect, it will be astronomically huge. And you won't see it and it won't feel so huge and heavy along the way. But what happens is, is when we beat our personal best, or you choose to get 1% better every day, you will need a telescope to look back to see who you once were. I mean, that, that happened to me. So I'm a product of a product. I know it happens. I know it works because I've done it before and I do it year after year after year. So pick your one thing. And... Decide now that you're going to compete against yourself, not others. You see, amateurs 
compete against others. The truly successful people that are in the top one to three to 5%, they compete against themselves. They go to be their personal best. They don't care and they're not paying attention to others and necessarily what they're doing. They're paying attention to themselves. And they know that every day, if they beat their personal best, if they get 1% better or even more, they're at their very worst at that very moment. You are the worst version of yourself right at this moment if you commit to getting 1% better every day. And you compete against yourself, knowing that if you're out there and if you're letting, especially social media or things you're seeing or people are posting, make they're making you, it makes you feel a certain way. That's just the top 10% of people's lives for the most part. So stop comparing yourself to that shit. Seriously, put it down, put it away. Do stuff for yourself. Quit shooting all over yourself about all the things you should be doing and pick something that you will do that excites you, that makes you want to rededicate every day and work on this discipline. Uh, it has to be yours and you have to own it because if you don't and if it's someone else's goal for you or you're picking it because you think you should, oh, I should lose 20 pounds because my doctor says or my significant other or I just know and you're not feeling it and you're not committed to it, you're more than likely not going to do it. So why don't you choose a goal that you will do? Why don't you choose a discipline that you will do? that you will show day after day and recommit to because it's something you want to do and it will get you 1% better. It does not have to be a huge goal. And trust me, I love goal setting. I do work with people on some pretty amazing goals. So you can go from one extreme to the other. So I'm looking at you and I'm asking you, what is in your heart? What will you show up for? Some people will not go for the huge, extraordinary exceptional goals, because that's not making a connection with them. So meet yourself where you're at and do what it will, whatever it is that will move you forward. And look at the gratitude. Take care of yourself first. You know, going into this new year, forgive people that you need to forgive. And if that's yourself, do that as well, knowing that if you're not forgiving people and if you're holding resentment and if you're frustrated and if you're talking about the same situation or the same circumstance or the same people are complaining and bitching and moaning, that's only hurting you. It's like throwing coal at them. You burnt your hand because you picked up a piece of hot coal to throw it at them or drinking poison and expecting them to die. You're only poisoning yourself. And once again, trust me, I can say that with 100% certainty because that was me for over a decade. I did that. And I was in a really shitty spot because of that energy for so long, for so many years playing in that energy. It is not good. It's not a good place to be. And you can only control what you can control, which is your attitude and your thoughts. Those are two things I can promise you, you can control what you're thinking, and your attitude. Focus on those. Focus on what you want to do, what you can control, and stop focusing on the negative. The people in your lives that don't want you in their lives or don't want to show up for you at a high level, accept it and move on. Accept what is if you've done really what everything that you feel you can within your power, sometimes the answer is to look at what you can control and not what you can't control. And know that it's okay to have a funky holiday and be off and, and it's not going to be the picture perfect postcard that you got in the mail from so many other families. Uh, again, every family's got their drama. Every person's fighting their own battle. Uh, so remember that. Remember that smiles, holding the door open, giving some, someone a compliment. It's all free. 
and people will remember that you'll at least shift their energy for that moment and maybe an hour, maybe a day by how you make them feel, not even necessarily what you say, it's how you make them feel. Go out and find someone, everyone you come in contact with, just leave them with the impression of increase, meaning that they're better off having been in your presence or been in, been around you. What can you say? What can you do? How can you make them smile? And just make that your mission. If you don't have something for the new year, do that. Do that every day that you're going to make one person leave them with the impression of increase. Because in doing that, whether you like it or not, you'll feel better. You'll elevate your energy as well. So if you don't have one, there you go. I just gave it to you for, for 2024, what you can do if you don't have a New Year's resolution or, or know where to go or what to do. Uh, it will help you as well as so many people around you. I just wanted to jump on today and share that. I know that I've talked to so many people and uh, the holidays are supposed to be beautiful and full of cheer and and beauty and love and laughter. And sometimes it's not, and that's okay too. Uh, you just, you do what you can and go back to gratitude always. Find what you're grateful for, write it down, lean into that, lean into what you can control and start taking care of yourself versus shooting all over yourself. That's it's it's not going to get you anywhere. So if you need anything, you know where to find me. And until next time, have a very happy in-between week before the new year and after the holidays. Um, we'll catch you next time.